So let's look at the following example in which we're going to calculate the net electric field at a point A, a distance X, from the middle of a very long thin wire of positive charge. So we're assuming that our charge inside our very long thin wire is continuous. And let's begin by looking at the following diagram. So we have our very long thin wire which extends in the negative direction all the way up to negative infinity and in the positive direction all the way up to positive infinity. Now the distance from some point A to the middle of our very long thin wire is given by x and let's suppose this point at the middle of the wire is the origin. So that means this is the x-axis, this will be our y-axis. Now we want to calculate what the net electric field is at point A as a result of this continuous charge. So we begin by essentially dividing our charge into infinitely small sections with length given by dy. Now each one of these sections, each one of these dy sections will have its own charge given by dq. So it will be an infinitely small charge dq. Now each one of these infinitely small charges will produce its own infinitely small electric field given by dE. Now if we sum up all these charges, that means we can sum up all the electric fields that these charges produce. So if we integrate that result, that will give us the final answer. So let's begin by taking a very small section dy and calculating the electric field as a result of that section dy, which has a charge dq. So this is shown in the following diagram. So this is our point A. The distance between point A and the section is given by z. So we have zx. And this y is the distance from the origin to this section dy. Now this is a right triangle and that means x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. So notice that because this is a positive charge that means the electric field at point A as a result of this positive charge will point directly away from it as shown by the following vector dy. Now because the vector makes an angle theta with respect to the x-axis, it will have an x component and a y component as shown by the following two more vectors. Now what we essentially want to do is we want to sum up all the y component vectors as a result of all these small sections dy. And then we sum up all the x components of all these sections and to find the net we simply take the square root of the square of the sums. So, before we begin, let's recall the equation for the electric field. Electric field is equal to Q divided by 4 pi multiplied by epsilon multiplied by d squared, where d squared in this case is simply z. So we begin by calculating what dE is. So our infinitely small electric field at point A as a result of charge dQ found in dy is equal to dQ divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by z squared. Now because this is a right triangle, z squared is simply equal to y squared plus x squared. Now let's discuss these sections dEy. Notice if we take this same section that is found above the x-axis, so it's somewhere here, and we examine the electric field produced by that small section, that will point in this direction. And notice this vector will have its own x component and its own y component. The x component will point in the same direction as this one, but the y component of this infinitely small charge will point directly downward. And it will have the same magnitude as this. So the sum of those two will be zero. In fact, by the symmetry of this situation, because the up is the same as the down part below the x-axis, by the symmetry of the setup for all positive dEy below the x-axis, there will be a negative dEy above the x-axis. And, and when we take the sum of those, that will give us zero. So Ey is equal to the integral of dEy, which is equal to zero. 
So, that leads us direct to step three. We see that the net electric field at point A is simply a result of the X components. So, the net E is equal to the EX. Now, EX is equal to the integral of all these DXs. So, the integral of DEX. Now, we know because this is a right triangle, if we take this and place it here to form our right triangle, we see that cosine of the angle theta multiplied by DE is equal to DEX. So we replace DEX with cosine theta DE. Now from part A or from part 1, we know that DE is equal to this quantity. So we replace DE with this entire formula. And that's exactly what we get in this case. Now from the previous lecture, we were able to show that DQ, our infinitely small charge, is equal to our charge density given by alpha multiplied by the infinitely small section given by dy. So we define alpha as the charge density, which is the total charge divided by the length. And this is a constant. So we can replace dq with the product of alpha multiplied by dy. And that's exactly what we do in the following section. So let's take this and let's take out some of our constants. So we're taking out alpha and 4 pi epsilon. And we get the following result. Uh, our, ch our charge density alpha divided by 4 pi epsilon naught. Take the integral of cosine theta multiplied by dy divided by x squared plus y squared. Now this integral is with respect to y and we want to make it with respect to theta. So that means in part 4 we want to represent y as a function of theta. Now by this right triangle we see that y is equal to x multiplied by tangent theta. Now if we take the derivative of these two sides, if we derive this side with respect to our y and this side with respect to our theta, we get the following result. dy is equal to x multiplied by d theta divided by cosine squared theta. Now notice the x is simply a constant. The x remains the same. So, we also know from this right triangle that cosine of the angle theta is equal to x divided by z. So, adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Now, x divided by z can also be written as x divided by x squared plus y squared raised to the power of one half. Now, that implies 1 divided by x squared plus y squared is equal to this raised to the second power divided by x squared. So this quantity is equal to cosine squared theta divided by x squared. So let's go back to this result. From this result, we know that alpha divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by the integral of this. Now we know that dy is equal to this quantity and 1 over x squared plus y squared is equal to this quantity. Remember, we want to replace the dy with respect to our d theta. So this becomes, we have cosine theta, this remains multiplied by dy, which is this quantity. So multiplied by x, d theta divided by cosine squared theta. And notice 1 divided by x squared plus y squared is equal to this guy. So multiplied by cosine 2 theta divided by x squared. One of these x's will cancel, this will cancel, so let's do some canceling. These guys will cancel, one of these x's will cancel, and we're left with the following result. Notice this x is a constant, so we can bring it out. So we have alpha divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by x, and we're integrated. Now, notice before when we were integrating with respect to y, our upper limit was positive infinity, and our lower limit was negative infinity, because we're dealing with an infinitely long, thin wire. So, these values in terms of theta correspond to pi divided by 2 and negative pi divided by 2. So, we get the following result. 
we evaluate the following integral, we get this, and we evaluate this, and we get alpha divided by 4 pi epsilon theta multiplied by x, where x is simply this distance, and our alpha is simply the charge density, the total charge divided by our unit length. So this gives us our net electric field at point A, some distance x away from the middle of a very thin long wire with a uniform and continuous charge density.